Hello and a warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on my dad's 2000 Honda Civic. Um, this has got the D14Z4 engine in it. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to be doing a basic service today, but we are going to be checking um, the valve lash or the, uh, uh, the valve clearances on the engine. Um, it's important to do that when the engine's stone cold, which it currently is. It's been sat here for, well, literally two weeks now, um, and I'm only just getting around to it now. So um, there's loads of videos on this um, and on servicing, but my dad really wanted to see his car on the channel. So I'm going to do that for him. And what better way to start a video or start this little mini series if you like because we have got a few other jobs to do on this car exhaust alternator being a couple of them um so yeah what better way to start this little mini series so um yeah hope you enjoy the video and uh, let's get on with some work Okay, so um, unfortunately my microphone decided to fail um, for the next couple of clips in the video. So what I'm going to do is do a voiceover. I'll probably put this picture in the top corner just for entertainment purposes. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what I said here, so uh, bear with me. It's only for a couple of clips, fortunately. Um, I think what I remember saying is um, there's a little hole that as you can see that I've put poked the um, my extension bar through um, that that's actually there for the harmonic balancer but what I do in a moment is I actually remove um, that little bit of plastic cover so you guys can see better you don't need to do that it's just something that that I thought I'd do um, just to better illustrate what you're actually going for uh, I did say what size socket it was, and I can't for the life of me remember what it was. Let's see if I can see it in the video here. Uh, no, unfortunately, it's the the bit with the numbers on that are facing down. So that's a winner, isn't it? So yeah, uh, there's me there. You can see me that I'm just starting to take off the um, that bottom cover there. Totally optional, as I said before. So. Um, on to the next bit so here I'm removing the spark plugs as you can see um, I think I remember saying that I'm going to check the gap on these later which we do um, and have a look at the the, uh, the spark plug and I've just took the, uh, the little uh, rubber thing has come off on the plug which is just typical when you're trying to install the things I do have a magnetic one somewhere, but I don't think it's the right size for these plugs. Um, so yeah, I'm explaining something there. I can't remember what I said, to be honest with you. I'm probably talking about the leads. I think I remember saying that there was a slight misfire on the car, and that was because the leads weren't quite pushed in properly. They're quite a tight fit around the top where it seals around the, the top of the plug itself. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take all these out. This, uh, I'll probably speed this bit up to be honest. I think I'll just show the spark plugs in on the camera there as well. So next I begin by taking off the um, rocker cover. Um, just a few bolts which if I remember right here yeah, they 10 mil. Um, they look like they're 10 mils. Uh, I remember saying it on the video but um, I mean I suppose size is irrelevant really because they could very well all change slightly from car to car so yeah let's uh, let's remove that let's fast forward a bit here sorry if this is a bit wishy-washy but there we go I'll slow that bit down I think that's where I'll take the valve cover off looks quite clean under there that looks quite good doesn't it um, yeah we're coming towards the end of this clip and I think fortunately we're going back to um, live me um, or previous me where um, I talk about what I'm doing next I think this bit here I'm just messing around with tools so um, oh yeah there you can see me just giving it a bit of a clean up um, 
make sure there's no residue there. I actually reused the gasket on this because it was still in good condition and it still had a bit of springiness left in it. Um, if it had gone flat, I would of course replace it. Um, and it hasn't leaked since. I mean, fortunately, the car's um, been back on the road and my dad's been using it. So, yeah, um, that's enough from me. Um, I'll pass you back to past me where I can talk even more rubbish to you. So I just said that you need a, a long screwdriver. Well, I don't have a long screwdriver that's going to be long enough, but I've got this piece of copper household wiring I'm going to stick down the spark plug hole. Anything that goes down the spark plug hole really, because we're going to just use this simply as a guide to help out how a way of finding top dead centre or at least when the piston's fully up and both of these valves are loose, which we're probably not far off that now to be fair because we are quite loose on those. So next we're gonna be rotating the engine anti-clockwise um, until we get this to the very top, which as I said before, I think we're already there. So this is where your 18mm and your long extension will come into play. With all the spark plugs removed this should be nice and easy to turn which is another reason why we removed, or the main reason why we removed the spark plugs. you can see the two valves I think we're near enough at the top dead centre there but as you can see the uh, the exhaust valves are currently closed but the inlet valves are open because um, uh, there's no movement on them at all So just need to go around again. So I think we're nearly there. They're loose. And they're also loose now. Let's see if we can get that right to the top if we can. It's incredibly difficult to do because it seems to move a lot with just a very slight turn. I think we're almost there. So yep, yeah. that's what we want. Now fully, all the valves are fully closed, and that's near enough at top dead centre there. So for your valve clearances, your inlet is 0 0.17 millimeters to 0 0.22 millimeters, and the exhaust is 0 0.22 millimeters to 0.27 millimeters so um let's find the appropriate level we'll try and go in between those so i forgot to say earlier you're going to need a feeler gauge set so i'm going to try and find my 0 0.20 millimeters maybe So there's 0 0.203, there's 22, these are never seem to be in order but around this, actually that's pretty good there, that's probably about centred for the inlet ones, the 0 0.178 millimetres and that's what's that, that's uh, 7 thousandth of an inch is that? Just make sure that's nice and clean and what you want to do so we're going to do the inlet side first we're just going to slip that in between the uh, in between the valve itself and the uh, the little tightening screw or the adjustment screw 
and what you want is the is very slight drag on those they feel pretty good this one feels very loose though so this one I say feels pretty good now this is very subjective about how much drag you actually need I mean that feels quite loose really this is why you want to do this when the engine's cold because when the engine's hot obviously everything will expand and it'll throw the um, all your measurements off ignore the trains as always but it's always good to have a little it's probably better to have these very slightly loose rather than tight because you're ensuring that the valve is fully closing what can happen is if you if the valve is very slightly open all the time you will soon burn that valve out um, and you won't get full compression on that particular cylinder but we'll give these a slight tighten up so to tighten these 10 mil spanner and obviously you've got your screwdriver so we're just going to hold the back that adjustment so this is your locking nut so we'll undo that so that's now loose get our feeler gauge which I've conveniently lost and we're just going to hold back on this and just tighten our screw up a little bit now that feels much better for me very slight drag but I can still easily insert it so hold back on your screw and tighten your lock nut up I'm not doing it massively tight they don't need to be loads tight just tight enough recheck because they always seem to change that feels much looser now than what it was before so we'll just go back in there and just give that a, a very slight nip up just very very small adjustments there yeah I can still insert that feel the gauge nice and easily and it still drags nicely try and keep the feeler gauge as straight as you can as you go in there because any slight twist will give you potentially a false reading so again oh, that was very tight that's probably a bit too tight really just give that a nip up as I say just very very small adjustments on these now I've gone a bit too much there so I just ease that back a little bit that feels a bit better as it was probably land up retightening that anyway as soon as you tighten up that lock nut but again I could get that in there nicely nice bit of drag and we can move on to the exhaust valves now So just make sure that's nice and tight. Always recheck your work afterwards. Yep, that feels good. Do the same for the exhaust. So for the exhaust, I'm going to go for 24 if I've got it because that's roughly the middle twenty four or somewhere near there. I've got twenty five got two twenty five fours there. 
0.254 there so we just do that again on the exhaust is that the right one that feels a bit tight make sure all these are nicely tightened up don't want to over tighten these otherwise we'll be in big trouble so since the firing order is 1342 so we've done uh, number one so we're going to move on to cylinder number three because that'll be next in line for the firing order so we should only give that um, what's that a quarter of a turn and we should be at top dead center on this cylinder as well So since we last done the exhaust, we we'll check the exhaust first. Again, a little bit tight. For the spark plug gap, I've got this um, little disc thing, spark plug uh, gap gap tool. It's made by Silverline. Now, so we want this wants to be 1.1, so we'll find 1.1 on this little wheel here, which is just there. And then we check that against our uh, what did I say 1.1 that's just there isn't it so that is just about right that's good enough I'll say it would help if I actually got that in shot wouldn't it so there's 1.1 there it's a little bit loose so we can tighten that up if we just uh, lean that on there try and close it up a bit retest yeah that feels a little bit better it's probably more 1.2 the good thing is about these disc ones is you can just bring it along until it stops and that's about a 1.2 mil gap sorry I'm not getting that on the screen at all so a good thing about these disc style gapping tools is you could just simply bring the spark plug along until it stops which is going to stop at 1.2 there so we just need to close that up a little bit more and retest hardly done anything to it that time We're about there. Call that good. No, 
Now my little rubber <coughs> hold on thing tends to get stuck on the spark plug rather than actually in the socket so I'm going to have to just try and put these in as best I can. Always start them off by hand because they're very easy to cross thread. I've made that mistake once before. And then this is a bit of a big ratchet really but um, always in what I do is just nip these up just like these bolts here. There we go, that's, uh, that's tight, so just a quick nip up there, that's good enough. Nice smooth start up, no flattering anywhere, no tapping in noises, running nice and smoothly. Let's get our basic oil service done now. Just giving the engine a little bit of a run there just to uh, get it get the uh, engine oil up to temperature just for info the mileage on this is as you can see there 65,663 um, I actually believe it or not about oh, blimey, about nine ten years ago I actually saved this car from scrap um, a lady had had this car before me, one of my neighbours in fact, I see it um, over in the communal parking area as you just see there, um, I knew it was hers because it was, um, cause she, obviously she was using it before, uh, and I see it parked over there with another car in its place and I asked her well, what was going on with this and she says oh I don't know, she says I think I might scrap it. At the time, this car only had 33,000 miles on it. It's, um, it was an ex-motability car originally, I, I later on found out. Um, but the reason why she was scrapping it is because I don't think she really knew what to do with it. It had um, a clicking CV joint um, and the starter motor was very much on its last legs. I replaced the starter motor, put a new CV joint in um, and then uh, well it still had MAT on it anyway um, and here we are a f quite a number of years down the line and it's been a really good car reliable I had it for about three years I think and then I sold it to my dad and that's when I got my Mark III Cavalier uh, my blue one uh, not the one just in front there um, so yeah uh, this is up to temperature now so um, ignore the blowing exhaust sounds like a ricer being a Honda Civic it's absolutely perfect for that um, so yeah uh, we're gonna do basic oil change now and uh, change the air filter and also the automatic transmission fluid we're also going to change on this as well um, so yeah uh, let's go on with it so whilst that <coughs> oil is draining back down into the sump we'll start on this air filter really simple just for screws there 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 and there there we go these don't need to even be that tight so I'm not sure why that's been rounded off like that move that to one side one old air filter which is pretty knackered I'd say that don't look right. Great, it's not. Great, so that's not the correct one. So I'll have to try and get another another one for this car. 
Don't you just love it when things go to plan? I suppose we'll be moving on to the oil and filter next. The sump plug on these is 17 millimetres. So you can see there that this uh, aluminium washer has been crushed to submission um, and that's why it was leaking before. So we're going to take that off. And this is, I've only got copper washers. Um, so just try and find one that's the right size. And uh, we use a nice copper washer instead. That's after trying to get this... Uh, this old aluminium washer off first. I mean, uh, that's absolutely been crushed to the point where it's mushroomed up, even up the threads there. It's been crushed that much and it's warped anyway. So, yeah, we'll get that off of there. Yeah, that wasn't going to say anything, was it? It's not as big as I'd like it to be, but um, hopefully that'll seal against the oil pan good enough. We'll, um, we'll soon find out, I guess. That feels like it's sealed up quite nicely on there. Again, these don't need to be massively tight. And in the future we'll be able to reuse that unlike the aluminium one that you can see there now for the oil filter um you ca i can't even see it myself so there's no way i'm going to be able to show you guys however you have to give it the classic reach around <clears throat> and if you feel right at the back here you really have to get your arm right round and and feel towards the back and you feel the oil filter good luck if this is tight now I'll just about get my hands on it. Good news is it's not very tight. I've got the oil drain pan underneath the car there. You might be able to get to it better from underneath, but I've chosen to go from the top. So that's the oil filter coming undone. I'm probably going to miss the oil pan and drain it all over the driveway, which is pretty standard for me. There we go, that's off. To be fair, that's pretty empty. One oil filter. Oh, yeah, let's uh, spill it everywhere, shall we? Let's hope that this one here is the correct one. Yeah, that appears to be correct. That's good news. So, as always, use some old engine oil just to lube up the seal. And you only want to put this on hand tight. There's absolutely no reason for these to to well, to use anything other than your hand with oil filters. Only the uh, cartridge style where you and even they're virtually hand tight. Now the hardest thing is trying to find 
where the oil filter lived. Ah, there it goes, that uh, went down a bit further. Is that it there? Sorry, this is uh, makes for brilliant viewing, I'm sure. I think I could feel it. Ah, yes. That feels like it there. Just for reference, that oil filter is roughly in the middle of this, uh, the centre of the engine itself there, so in between cylinders two and three, roughly, but it feels quite relatively low down. So probably in line with this pipe just here, to give you some idea of where it is, because you cannot see it at all. In actual fact, You probably can't see it, but where this pipe is, uh, there it is there. there. You can see that little glimmer of light just there. That is the oil filter that's just gone in there. That's where you're, that's the kind of area that it's in. Got some regular 1040 oil here. So just uh, simply fill it back up. I think this would take around five litres, but we'll check it halfway through anyway. Good, let's check for leaks. little bit high but that's spot on so it must take just a little bit less than four litres then and as suspected totally missed that oil drain pan when I'd undone the oil filter. Hooray! Okay so to do the automatic transmission fluid on these you just it, they're really really easy um, there's no filter to change um, you always before you go draining your fluid low you always want to make sure that you've got a way of being able to fill it so if you've got a fill plug undo your fill plug first. On these on, on this uh, type of gearbox you fill it up through the dipstick tube so it's really easy now this is it a square drive yeah three quarter inch I think so just use your uh, socket drive that's got a little square end in there just put that in and then crack that off get our drain pan so we can spill it all over the driveway <coughs> these have a magnet on them to collect any metal filings you just need to give that a wipe off with a cloth get all the schmoo off Give it a rinse off in the ATF. That looks pretty good actually. Nice and red as it should be. No um, abnormal smells or anything. Let me just pull that dipstick out. Now I have got the car lifted at the moment just to just to get better access at undoing that plug so I'm just going to go and lower it down again this doesn't need to be very tight <coughs> it's only got an aluminium washer on which I've just turned around so just nip it up and that should be good to go 
So to give you a better viewing, I'm going to remove this uh, air intake pipe. Just fold that out of the way there. Something out. There we go. And remove this little bit of the wiring harness here. Just want to move it out of the way because this is where the dipstick is for the ATF. Clean funnel here. That's just going to sit in there like so, and then we can pour our fluid into there. I'm not too sure how many litres this is, but I think it's only three from memory. I'll put a couple in to start off with, and then uh, we'll just keep checking it. You want the proper Honda stuff for this, guys. I mean, this is what was sold to me by our by my motor factors. That's two litres, got three left. Check the level. Now, many cars, you check the oil level when the when the engine's running um, and they usually have two um, levels one for when the oil's hot and one for when the oil's at um, room temperature so to speak uh, on these you just check it when the engine's off so we're not even on the dipstick yet so we could continue pouring some more in So engine running and at idle, we're in neutral at the moment, so just put it into reverse first, allow it to kick in, you don't need to drive it anywhere or move the car, just uh, and now select every single gear, so neutral, drive, make sure that engages, which it has, drive free, that was drive four by the way which we also get an indicator up there. Drive two, drive one. Yes, I'm gonna slowly go back up the gearbox again. Ooh. It's a bit harsh on the um, engagement there. Just allow that oil to go round, park, I might give this a quick run up the road, but that's all we need to do just to check the oil level. Pull it back to park, switch the engine off, and then we'll check the oil level again. That oil level is absolutely spot on now. So that's it for this one. Um, many thanks for watching. Um, still plenty more work, odd little jobs to do on this. Um, little first, little warm up in the series. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.